August 10th, 2024, summer tub update. The, oh my God, I can't believe it's already mid-August episode. Okay. Got a little bit of a briskness in the air, but uh, I'm going to start right in on the tubs. As we always do with the Skiffy, a multi-punctata tub. Totally overgrown, but uh, I'm still seeing juveniles swimming, especially in the stems of this. Uh, oh, there was one that moved there. Uh, the stems of the watercress. Again, the duckweed is a nuisance, but as far as I can tell, has not moved over to any additional tubs, so fingers crossed it stays contained. The mint plant, this is a Swiss spearmint. Uh, is, uh, as you can see, flowering and is attracting pollinators, or in this case, oh no, that's not a yellow jacket, that's, no, that is a yellow jacket. On to the gold Madaka tub. Um, as you can see, there are many gold Madakas, probably about 50 in here, but the thing about them is they're getting big. Um... I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, they are, like, these are offspring from the year, and a lot of them are already an inch plus, so very, very high growth rate. Didn't get the numbers that I sometimes get, but I don't know. It's a trade-off, numbers versus growth rate, so, but yeah, you can see they are quite good. And I should say these gold madakas, um, I don't know if I've ever said it in a video, but they actually have like an official strain name that I found out several years ago and it's actually the High Madaka strain. So I'm debating on whether I should just start selling them as High Madakas because I think well, people, you know, for various reasons will pay more for stuff that has a Japanese name on it. But yeah, as you can see, uh, even though, well it's like mid 60s, right, low to mid 60s right now, air temp, but the Madakas are quite, quite active. Oh, yeah. Okay, a Phaneus Sirhani tub. Um, let's see if we can see any fry that may be around. Oh, not seeing any obvious ones uh, out and about. But, yeah, I've, I've been seeing some fry. Anything ranging from, you know, some little guys that are clearly just out of the egg that are, like, maybe a quarter inch or less to you know some ones that are pretty well developed you know in the half inch range so yeah Fanny Serhani doing good um interesting how this uh this pineapple mint grew I knew it was going to be prostrate but yeah kind of uh more upright than I thought it was going to be also on this Saint Madaka tub this Thai mint has interesting flowers as well and an interesting uh, growth form. Now the Satan tub, we had an unexpected um, occurrence, a change of events. I don't know if we'll see them, especially because they're black on black, but oh, there's one. There's Fry now in the Satan tub. Uh, yeah, only about, a, you know, a month after I expected them. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I'm kind of getting rid of the strain anyway, but yeah, there's a few Fry swimming around. I guess it'd be, they'll be useful if next year I need to go and pull. Um, there's some traits that the Satans have that I'd like to put in my breeding program for the other uh, strains. So, uh, yeah, may end up, if this other crossover here doesn't work, uh, grabbing some Satans from here. For next year, gold barb tub is just totally overgrown. As far as I can tell, no fish in it. Uh, the Valencia Laternoi tub. Um, I'm seeing a few fry around, you know, so they're clearly they reproduce, but not high numbers. I'm trying to see if I can find any right now, but uh, but yeah, you know, there's I feel like, um, <sighs> I feel like. The Valencia are on the ball. I've only got like two or three fish still inside. 
and I guess we'll see when I break down the tub, but I am worried about the long-term viability of this particular line if I don't get a, a good amount of production this year. So hopefully there's a bunch of them that are just hiding out in the, uh, in the plant growth that I'm just not seeing. On to the turtle tub. Will we get a... Oh no, I just saw him go under. Uh, I was hoping that the turtle would come up and make an appearance. But she is somewhat camera shy. Maybe the... Uh, oh yeah, there's some nice... These Madakas. This, this 2024 kind of marbled cross. You can see some of these guys... Have got this beautiful black and orange marbling on them. Actually, some of them might even be tricolors. Have to check. Oh, and there's a uh, there was a uh, a juvenile uh, Jordanella Fl uh, Florida flagfish that just came up too. Um, yeah, the the fish are doing great in this tub, which kind of uh, is a bit of a surprise considering there's a turtle in here. But evidently, the turtle is not uh, particularly piscivorous, so. Yeah, I've got some good size on them, you know, I don't know numbers-wise how many I've got, but I've got enough um, to continue the uh, the marbled project in the next year, which is good. Uh, yes, indeed. Now the Pasilia Chica tub. Uh, I haven't seen any fish in here in, like, the better part of a month. So I have a sinking suspicion that they all kicked the bucket when it got really hot. I don't know, again, it's one of those, we'll, we'll, we'll get the, uh, we'll get the real results when I take it down, but, uh, yeah, this canna is, you know, slowly been blooming, I don't know if it's actually producing fertile seeds or not, but, yeah, there's, so, oh, saw one of the, uh, breeder female Madakas in there, but she just dove back down. Okay, going over to the platy tub, the platy bucket, really. And of course, they're not at the surface right now, probably because it's cool. But, um, yeah, oh no, there's, is there one? Yeah, there's one. So, yeah, there's one of the platy fry. Um, it looks like there's probably a dozen in here. Um, they are... Well, it'll be interesting to see as they continue to grow out. Right now, they're just kind of like a gold, uniform goldish color, which is not really like either of the parents. Um, the male was yellow with um, red dorsal and uh, caudal fin, and then a Mickey Mouse pattern. And the female was white with just a red dorsal. So, I don't know. We'll see how things shake out with these guys. Um, yeah, there's one that you can see, oh, ducking back into the, the algae there. Uh, this is, uh, if you didn't see the last week's video, before I knew that the Satans had produced fry, I went and took my, uh, Hikari male out of the 75-gallon tub over here and put him with two females from a cross of gold and, um, Satan, um, Madakas that I did last year had some females, that have some traits, namely having dark eyes and uh, black rim scales. That I would like to continue. I would like to keep those traits in my uh, in my Madaka breeding program. So I was going to breed the Hikari male with those two females, with the hope of keeping those traits on, and also producing F ones that are 100% het for Hikari. That way, because I don't really have very many. Um, uh, Hikari offspring, really only two, and I think they might be both males, that I would have 100% heads to breed back to those males. Phineas Mento Tub. Uh, water's really cloudy. I actually did a water change this week, which I usually don't do on the tubs, but I just was, you know, you know, it wasn't that the water was cloudy per se, but there had been some, uh, some of that pink algae that had come back, and it was kind of had the, uh, a rank smell, so I... Did a water change and now it's looking better. But yeah, there's a ton of, or at least there were a ton of Aphanius Mento fry in here. I'm not seeing as much recently, but I think that might be because the algae's really receded. But yeah, lots of Aphanius Mento fry, many of them good sizes. I know a few days ago I saw a bunch of um, a bunch of juveniles hanging out, and there were ones that were probably three quarters of an inch. 
So, yeah, just uh, just doing good, good size on those guys. And of course the um, the Hikari, the Yangife Hikari Madakas dive into the water lettuce as soon as I come over. But there's the breeder female right there. Oh, there she's going. Don't know if we'll see one of the two juveniles. I saw one just a minute, moment ago, but he dove into the water lettuce. But yeah, there's at least the uh, the breeder female. The male is, like I said, in that muck bucket. Oh, there was another one that went over here. But yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, thing trying to see if I can keep the Hikari line going next year because it's just it's not been productive at all. Oh, there's one of the juvies. Um, yeah, they're just not producing, and ever since I've had them, I've had issues with production. So, I don't know. We'll see. It's going to be quite a project for next year. The Mayuki tub, I did see one new fry um, a day or two ago, but I'm not seeing it now. But yeah, it's just weird that these guys haven't really produced either. Um, so, who knows? It's kind of a, a line that, uh, while well, it's my first uh, first line of Madakas that I've had that I got, um, it has been kind of frustrating working with them the last couple of years. So I don't know. We'll see. It might be one that I might think about discontinuing. Anyway, uh, the Aphanius Vladikovic tub, as you can see, it's totally, totally grown in with plants. Especially I added some. Uh, water lettuce a few weeks ago that's really come in but yeah haven't seen any of the fish in here in a while i'm assuming the adults are still around um still haven't seen any fry i think it's just gonna be one of those situations where i gotta when i break down the tub hopefully there's some fry in the bottom but i'm just not seeing otherwise i you know don't know what the the future of this line will be either but yeah that's uh that's kind of where we're at with uh, this. And I should also add these uh, mythalias. Each mythalia plants have um, thrown off these inflorescences, these flower spikes, um, including the one in the uh, Aphanius mento tub over there. And this um, water celery has just gone, you know, totally, totally gone native, as it were. <laughs> just almost filling up the tub, and it's just only, you know, a pot, you know, maybe. The pot that it was in is maybe that big, so it just started flooding out of the pot. Um, the final tub, the Iliadon tub, uh, this quote-unquote Australia canna has um, is flowering, and you know flowers are looking great. I have had a lesson learned. Um, this thing keeps getting knocked over by the wind because I didn't wait down. I didn't put any rocks or anything in the bottom of its pot, so anytime there's a strong wind, it gets knocked over. And you can see, like, the uh, the sweet flag, a bunch of the leaves got bent because of that. But, you know, what can you do? Otherwise, you know, the uh, Marsilia is doing good. I've actually been kind of pruning it back to keep open water. And then I don't really see the Iliadon or the Krakodon that are in here very much, but I think they're just all hanging out at the bottom. But yeah, that's the mid-August update. Um, you know, two weeks will be late August, so getting close to starting to take stuff down. And uh, yeah, time flies when you're having fun, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what's been going on in a whistle-stop tour. Mostly at this point, just growing stuff out. And then we, you know, thinking about... Um, you know, planning out where I'm going to be taking stuff in for the winter, uh, both fish and uh, some of the plants too. So, anyways, yeah. Uh, hope you guys are uh, doing well, and uh, yeah, if you're doing any tubbing yourself, uh, give me an update on it on how you're doing.